name's Alice Gray and welcome back to another episode of Grey Matter, the series of science shorts that talks all things brain and cracks all things cranium. I haven't filmed a video in a while so I thought I'd come back with a bit of a bang and do something a little bit different and today we're going to be playing Science Hot Ones. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? Not me. If you haven't heard of Hot Ones, where have you been? It's an amazing show where celebrities answer questions whilst also eating chicken wings of varying spice levels. So today, as a full-time soy boy, I've made myself some cauliflower wings of varying degrees of spice, which I will gracefully shovel into my gob whilst trying to tell you about the science of spice. So I'm gonna start with something a little bit milder um, and work my way up. As the science gets more intense, so does the spice. Nom nom nom. Mmm. Mmm. So chili peppers are a member of the capsicum genus, which is a sciencey way of saying the pepper family. And capsicums are considered a irritant because they cause a burning sensation to varying degrees. And that is because chilies contain a component called capsaicin. Capsaicin is found throughout the chilies, but in highest quantities in the white tissue holding the seeds. And it's thought that natural selection has driven this. Nom nom. Capsaicin activates a receptor called TRPV1, or the vanilloid receptor. In birds, TRPV1 receptors aren't activated when they eat capsaicin and they don't destroy the seeds when they eat them and therefore they can eat them and poop them out and distribute them. Whereas animals with molar teeth would grind and ruin the seeds as they eat them. So over time, the amount of capsaicin around the seeds has increased as these are the plants that would be likely to have survived and the seeds to have been dispersed. I think I should probably spice it up for this next section. Oh, that's spicy. Mm. Tasty, but spicy. So when you... <clears throat> so the TRVP... Oh, God. <coughs> so normally the TRPV1 receptors monitor for heat, temperature, and pain. So when you eat capsaicin, it binds to the TRPV1 receptors and triggers that response. <coughs> so even these... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So even though these aren't particularly hot in temperature, they activate the receptors that would normally detect these stimuli. So that's why when we eat something hot, we start to sweat, we might experience pain, and um, get this sensation of heat. I really hope I'm not triggering some weird ASMR like fetishes whilst doing this. The positive being that because capsaicin activates these receptors, we could use capsaicin as a way to treat chronic pain. So it's possible that we could use capsaicin cream or exposure to capsaicin to desensitize pain nerves to localized chronic pain. Another receptor in this family called the TRPM8 receptor responds to cold temperatures. So if you've eaten a lot of chili <coughs> and are feeling the effects, we could try and stimulate the TRPM8 receptors to counteract this. So normally after a spicy meal, people will drink water or milk to cool them down, but these don't activate the TRPM8 receptors. <clears throat> the TRPM8 receptors are also activated by menthol, the active ingredient in mint. So whilst the TRPV1 receptors are being triggered by capsaicin, we could use something like this to trigger the TRPM8 receptors to help us cool down. I'm um, gonna have quite a few. I can confirm it does actually work. So that's it for this episode of Grey Matter. Stay tuned for next time.